I am Mary Stringfellow. I am the Asset Programs Team Leader for Federal Highway in our Louisiana Division office here in Baton Rouge. Um, how many of you, you know what Federal Highway does? Just, just curious. Very few of you, that's okay. Just know that we administer all the money to DOTD to build the projects. And so we administer the money also to local governments for your federally funded projects. And uh, all these programs are under me um, at the division office. So I'm, you're here today for the LPA qualifications training intro to CE&I. You're here to learn as a public agency, a local public agency, if you have a federally funded project through DOTD where you're a subrecipient, you're gonna be overseeing the construction project. That's why, why you're here. Right now, this class is not mandated, required, but I think that is going to change. Matt, look at me, yes, he's shaking his head. So you're lucky you're here today, so now you're getting this course. In the future, we're having a lot of issues on construction projects, on getting what we talk about today, getting all this done. So what you hear today, it all has to be done. And you're hearing it, and now you know. So, um, but this is, this is the point of this, is so you know up front the requirements, the rules, when you take federal funds, there are more strings, and that's the way it goes. If you don't want to do all these things, don't apply for the federal funds. That's okay. You can use your own funds for whatever you want to use it for, but just know when you apply for federal funding through DOTD, this is what you have to do today. So to keep it a little lively today and so you're not falling asleep and making sure you're not going, you know, snoozing out for all these exciting presentations, we're going to have um, games, questions. So you are all now officially pirates, OK? You didn't know that when you were coming today, but you are now the members of the Bloody Mary's pirate gang, and I am Bloody Mary. So which team are you on? We have four teams. The first row right here from you, Daniel, over this way to Priscilla, you guys are the scallywags, OK? You're that, you're that team. Then the second row, you guys are the barnacles. Third row is the shellbacks. I hate to say it, that's my favorite team because um, my dad and my husband were all in the Navy, so I'm kind of partial to shellbacks. So watch me, I might cheat, you never know, you know, so just be careful about me. So the third row, you're the shellbacks, and the fourth row, you are the urchins. So that's your pirate gang that you're, and at the end of the day, whoever has the most poker chips in their gold bucket, wins a prize so and it's going to be a cool pirate prize so all right so why are you here so if you want you want to apply for federal highway money through dotd you need to know what are the expectations for performing ce and i construction engineering and inspection for your project This does just not like me. There we go. All right, this is what we're going to talk about today. I'm not going to read it all, but we're each, we're going to go through each of these things. We have presenters that know these topics in and out, except for the few that I'm presenting for other people because they couldn't come today. But I have seen this presentation at least 200 times, so I think I can present all these presentations if I had to. So we're gonna go through all of these today. We're gonna to have people that know the answer to these questions for you. Please ask questions because you have, like we, you're gonna have Matt Jones here. Matt works in the DOTD construction section. He has the answers for what he's presenting. So ask questions, please do not be shy. Right, where can you go for help for on DOTD's website? If any of you have been to DOTD's website, it's such a very user-friendly, um, website but over here i'm sorry to be sarcastic federal highways isn't that user friendly either so right here we got my dotd click on that and then you go over here and you click on administration the little you will follow the yellow circles and then here on the red you get the um 
local public agencies and DOTD has a website for local public agencies. And over here on the left are all the things there for local public agencies. A lot of what we're teaching you today is in all these documents that are on the website. And in particular, there is the LPA manual and appendix right here. All of this is, is in this LPA manual and appendix. Um, we do need to update the manual, but that's a something for the next year that we're going to be working on. So if so, after today, you go, okay, I can't remember this. I'm wondering about that. You can go on the website and find out. You all also have the presentations from every presenter today in note form so that you can follow along, take notes. So pull those out of your green folders. And as each new person comes up, you have their presentation. So you have it. So that's also a reference for you. And you can also just go to this cute QR code. There we got our little dinosaur. That's the LPA dinosaur. We can finally call him LPA Rex. Right there, go to there, and it'll take you right to the, um, LP, the DOTD website on your cell phone. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is, and so this is the third, or actually the third day of a series of three-day classes. There's, in the first two days of the class are the core LPA core training course. How many of you have taken the LPA core training course? A few of you have. So in the course, it talks about a project from beginning, cradle to grave, uh, a project, how it goes through DOTD's um, project delivery system. A big piece of your project it is called the entity state agreement. Before, when you apply for a project, you're going to start wanting to get reimbursed for the work that's happening on that project, whether it's for design and or construction. There is an entity state agreement that has to be signed by the local government and DOTD. And these are the type of things that are in the entity state agreement. The core class, we go through it very extensively, so I'm not going to go through it today. But just know, so if you have never seen the entity state agreement that you are going to use for the project that you're going to go into construction on, you need to find that. That entity state agreement is somewhere in your local agency's files for that project. You should read your entity state agreement. It talks about all the details of what, do you, what you as a local government are agreeing to do to deliver this project as a federal aid project. And it's a legal document. Your agency has signed it, so you need to, if you haven't seen your entity state agreement, you need to pull it out and read it. These are the multiple things. So we got page one, page two. There's all these different things in the entity state agreement. I'm going to note here you see um, construction plus CENI, that's in there. There's a whole t uh, section on it. There's civil rights, the, all of the compliance things, that's in there. The compliance laws, all of this is in the entity state agreement, so you should be reading it if you are in responsible charge of your project or, um, it, or if you are the LPA hired PE for that construction project. If you're a consultant that's working on, for an LPA and you're this, the LPA's PE, you, need, you should be, know what's in this entity state agreement because that's what your entity has agreed to do. I already kind of told you this. If you can't find it, then you need to contact DOTD. During, during project development of a project, there's a project manager assigned to every LPA project. When it, tra when it transitions to construction, then there's a project coordinator that is assigned. So one of those two people from DOTD can help you find this entity state agreement. If you can't find it, but you should have it in your files. The LPA should have it. All right, when federal dollars are involved. Again, I've talked about this a little bit. There are strings attached. One of the main reasons there's a lot of strings in the state of Louisiana is state law in Louisiana does not meet federal law in a lot of ways. So that entity state agreement takes the federal laws and requirements and puts them down on you, the local government. You have to follow state laws. And DOTD has to follow, not state law, federal laws federal laws, UNDOTD. So 
Federal Highway, our division office, we have an agreement, a stewardship and oversight agreement with DOTD, and it tells them that they have to help local governments oversee LPA administered projects if you're using federal funds for locally local projects. So they have to help you advertise the consultant contracts if you want reimbursement for design, if if you want federal reimbursement for design, and they always have to let the construction project for you, DOTD. You cannot let a federally funded formula funds, I'm, I'm not even gonna go into formula and discretionary in this meeting, in this one. In the core class, I explain the different types of federal funds. The funds we're talking about today are the formula funds that pass through DOTD when the local government is a subrecipient. They have to let your construction project, but it's still your project. I know that's kind of a weird, a kind of a weird situation, but they are facilitating you getting to use the federal formula funds. That's what DOTD is doing for you. And they do it under the stewardship and oversight agreement with Federal Highway. So the LPA must be prepared when your project's going out to bid. Do, does, is, the, is the engineering estimate always exact and the, that's what the contractors bid? What do you think? Especially in the last few years, has that been happening? No, the prices have been escalating, going all over the place. So the LPA, if the bid for that construction project is more than the engineering estimate and more than what is federally set up in DOTD system for that project, you, the LPA, is gonna to have to make up the difference. So it's very important that that engineering estimate that is done by, by the consultant is as accurate as possible. You must work with DOTD's program manager if, if, to, if, if your project lets higher than what is set up for that project. So here is it on a construction project with federal highway funds on it. This is how you, the local government, and your consultants should be working with DOTD. You shall have somebody in responsible charge of that project. That is your local government's contact. They are the project manager there. They are overseeing that project. Now, you will have probably, unless you're a few of the local governments, like Baton Rouge, you guys have your own project engineers that do projects sometimes. Um, most local governments don't. You'll have a consultant that is your LPA project engineer. They need to be working through that, that full-time local government employee and working with DOTD, okay? This, these two yellow boxes are who communicates with each other. This person over here handles all those over there. This, this DOTD project coordinator handles all this stuff, so. All right, Federal Highway, I just want to let you know about this. We have some, ver some 10 minute to eight minute, you know, short videos that uh, local governments can watch. They're at this, web this link right here for the QR code. And there's all kinds of good information about federal, federal aid funding requirements of Federal Highway. They're there. If you can want a reminder, go watch the video. If you want to, we're, we're going to, um, in the other class, we show the um, re engineer and responsible charge, the responsible charge video. So that's on here too. There's just lots of, there's a video about project construction and contract administration. So there's, this is just technical help for you if you're interested. There's a handout that tells you up in your green folder that tells you about this. So local governments, you've applied for money. You've got a project, you got it through DOTD's design process. Your project's going out to let to construction. Is DOTD in charge of that project? Heck no. You, it's your project. You own the project. You are in charge. DOTD is going to help you and assist you. We're going to talk about the different roles and who does what, but you are responsible to make sure that project gets built through the per the contract, make sure that your LPA PE, if you have a consultant working for you, is doing all the things that we're gonna teach you today. It is your job to do this. And again, if you don't want the federal money, that's okay. You don't have to apply for it. But if you apply for federal money through DOTD, this is the requirements that you need to make sure you follow. 
Question, how many local government representatives do we have in the room? They actually work for a local government. Ooh, very few, a few. So I've been talking to these local governments in responsible charge. Like I know, George, you're going to be in responsible charge of a couple projects. Um, now, how about consultants? How many consultants are in the room? Okay, so you are pro you're going to be working for the local government as a usually as a project engineer, and you're going to have a staff of people, inspectors, and etc. You report to that LPA, but what we're teaching the LPAs today of what has to be done, you got to make sure it gets done. All these different things that we're going to be presenting to you, it's different than you doing your own construction project with your own money. It is totally different. Know that. Expect that it's going to be different. And just make sure you handle your stuff and get everything done. All right. Um, this is the responsible charge requirement in federal law and regulation 23 CFR 635. Now that's some exciting stuff. If you guys want to have a hard time to sleep at night, wake up at 2 a.m., pull up Google 23 CFR 635. It will put you right to sleep. Very exciting stuff. But it's the rules that, you know, we have federal laws and regulations. This is in the regulation. So a local government has to be in responsible charge of the project. You cannot, consultants in the room, they cannot hand that project over to you and say, let me know when it's done. It is not allowed. That local government needs to be engaged and involved when we're talking about scope, schedule, and budget of a project. They need to be engaged. They don't have to be on a project all the time, but they have to be engaged with the projects. So even if that consultant is retained by the local government, the local government has to have a person in responsible charge. It's not a full-time job. A local government might have three federal projects. You could have one responsible charge in charge of three projects, but you have to know what's going on in all these different projects. And it, it doesn't have to be, you have to have somebody in responsible charge during design, and you have to have somebody in construction, but it doesn't have to be the same person. It could, there can be a handoff. But, um, and you don't have to be an engineer to be in responsible charge. But you have to know enough about the project to know that your consultant is overseeing that project the way it should be. So key things, uh, the person in responsible charge of the project needs to attend the meetings. The meetings that Matt is going to talk about, that person in responsible charge needs to attend. Don't just send your consultant and say, yeah, I don't have time, you go and handle it, etc. If you, the LPA, don't have enough time to send people to these projects, maybe you don't need these projects. You need to have somebody and you go to those meetings, key meetings, and we'll, you'll learn what the key meetings are. And you need to be involved in knowledge of what is going on on that project. You don't have to be out there every day, but you need to know what's going on. So when DOTD, who's DOTD going to be calling about that project? They should be calling the person in responsible charge at the local government. Now they'll, they'll come out and coordinate, might come out and do an inspection on your project and talk to the, um, your LPA PE, you know, your consultant, but the, L the local government in responsible charge should be at those meetings too. If DOTD is coming and visiting your project, if Federal Highway is coming and visiting your project, d your, the local government person should be there too. So first question for the scallywags. Okay, the LPA responsible charge must be a licensed professional engineer, front row. What's the answer? False. False, are you sure? Yeah. You sure I didn't say that? Correct, false. Okay, you got your first, first tip for the scallywags. What? There's Priscilla. Okay, I'm going to introduce Priscilla. Priscilla Hall, she's the LPA program specialist at DOTD. She um, handles a lot of the paperwork for the, what is that thing called? The ICQ. I always forget that. ICQ. That, um, it is a form about the risk and it's about the financials of the local government and are you a risky local government to accept federal funds? Uh, Priscilla handles all of that. 